G'day and welcome, and I will start by apologising for not having much content out lately. It's just been ridiculously busy at this end, and I also have to say happy Easter to everyone as well. Right, there are four parts to this video. The first one is on a table that a Year 11 student did last year. Um, she didn't finish it, she only got the top done, but didn't do the frame, so I've just thrown the frame together, and she can go home and finish it with her parents and brothers and all that sort of stuff. Um, I work with her mum anyway, so how are you going? Uh, oh, what's after that? Update on the EJ. The EJ seems to be quite a popular car. It's a 62 Holden, for those that don't know what an EJ is. And got the front clip all sort of, or the Y-frames all cleaned up. And got some wheels to start making a dolly. I've just got to order the steel. And we'll get into that in the next video. And there's also uh, the little white Starly, which I haven't... Did I show any content on the white Starly? I don't know if I have yet. No, I haven't. This is the first one. I want to stay away from it too much starlet stuff because it seems to be the thing that isn't so popular but it eh, doesn't matter that's what I'm doing at the moment right and it's been pranked at the front so I do a bit of a crash repair on that although it's not finished yet and then we have a look at the green Corolla so without banging on too much more I hope you enjoy pardon the crummy surround this is Alicia's table um right there's a story with this there's a few stories with it really she was a kid I had in year 11 last year for product design and the kids had to choose um, a theme, if you know what I mean, uh, to make an article of furniture. And hers was industrial. Most of the kids prefer industrial design. I'm an Art Deco guy. The kids like the modern stuff. Um, I think this is Tassie Oak. Now, this was an old woodworking bench and very, very shabby. Go away, bird. Uh, what we would do with these is we cover them with masonite at the end of every year. And to make them look more presentable. But anyway, one of them was decommissioned and they took off the tops and they were just two strips along this long bench. And she took a, a shine to it. Now, it's battered and bruised, whoops, sorry. And there's holes and there was about a million nails. And I asked her, I took the nails out of one. And I said, listen, you can take the nails out of the other because I don't want to run them through the saw with nails in there. Only brads. We got most of them. Um, and the problem with it is because it's all chipped, that would have been the edge of the bench there you would see the bright timber underneath where it was cut. So I said to her, well, why don't you put some sort of design into it? And she wanted a herringbone design, and we chose Jarrah as the little fillers. Now, I... Just a moment, I've got to have some more tea. My mum bags me, actually, because it's... I leave the tea bag in, she said, that's workman's tea. Right. Now, we don't have the tools we used to in the classrooms. They've all been sort of changed around. We have our own tech centre there, which is a sort of own RTO. It's like a, um, what do you call it? A TAFE college. And he rolled up a bit of this for me, because we don't have rollers in the rooms anymore. And I'm just going to pop it out. It's a really tight fit, because what he ended up doing was rolling it a little bit too small. Now, when we did this, let me just get this out and try not to damage it or drop it. When we did this, I got Alicia to, whoops, here we go, mount on a bit of ply. You can see we've been welding to sort of tack it together, so I have to tidy that up. And I put a half inch hole and made a jig. So there was a half inch piece of dowel sitting on a piece of wood that was clamped to the table saw, and we rotated this as the edge of the saw was cutting it into a circle. Let's move that for a moment. I don't really need to weld inside, but I don't want anyone seeing where I've been. I'll just lie down and do the top as well. Whoops, hang on a minute. Okay, do okay. Right, splendid. Good. Um, it's going to be full of resin too. Yep, there's a little bit there. Where's my mask? <laughs> Here it is. That should do rather splendidly. Mm. 
the table. I wanted to give it to the kid to paint, but I decided not to. I've just given it a splash with a bit of satin black because I wanted to seam seal all under here in those sort of areas there because it's going to have, um, what do you call it? Um, resin in it. Um, I've painted underneath it too. And again, you can see where the seam seal is. I don't think that matters because it's underneath. And I'll just affix it with a few screws. And then sort of seal around the perimeter. It'll have to be sealed all around the perimeter so when they fill it with resin, it's not going to leak everywhere. But uh, that's looking pretty good. I'm happy with that. I haven't done this too well. Um, I'm sort of doing the front of the starlet at the same time as this table. And I've got to move inside and do the dining room, paint the dining room. Yeah, it's there. Hang on, I'm just going to build it up. Try it there, you reckon? Most of it you sand off anyway. I'll leave it like that. Let's see if we can get it. it just, the, the, oh gosh, the weld was better. They were both really good. They were both really good welds. They penetrated well. But the inside's virtually invisible, but the exterior, I could see it. And I wasn't happy with it. Um, I was going to throw a bit of black under here. I've made the marks where the table actually fits, or where it fitted the best, and then I probably painted over the marks on the frame, which was really clever. And um, you can see where I've tacked it. This is just automotive etch, which I'm using. Whoops, on the Starly, you need a bit more gas. Actually, we need a lot more stuff. This is going to be thin. Let's give it a thin one first. And we'll come back and cover it. I'm going off like that so that I don't get any black on the sort of top part of it. But it'll just pretty it up a little bit. I should have used a full size gun. I'm using a touch up gun because of the repairs on that car. And I don't want to get the full size gun dirty. Because then I have to clean it, right? Anyway, look, I think that's going to do it. It's on the nice table. And I think that will be fine. Sweet. Right. That'll do. And that blotchiness is just variations in the grain. It'll do. It's fine. That's the hole that we put the half inch dowel through to rotate it into the blade. Hmm. Right. The thing I regret with this is that black seal I used. It looks like total ass. And I did all around here in it, and then realized I had the white stuff, which, because the, the black one's an automotive one, and I lost the nozzle. <laughs> so I was just using my finger, which was ridiculous. And you can see it's like everywhere. So we'll put the other stuff on, because it's better. And... I think we're done after that. This is Sikaflex 227. When you buy this, a lot of people complain that it's off because it has a use-by date on it. And this one's well out of date, but a guy gave me a great tip and he said, leave it in the freezer when you finish using it. I bought this to seal up the headlights on the XC, and I don't remember when I did that. It was probably a year ago now. I don't know. And... Here we are still using it. Okay, I think that'll do. Um, if they want to, they can paint over that. Um, they'll also have to get plugs for here so it doesn't scrape up the floors. I'm just going to turn it around. We've got a little bit of that white stuff coming up um, where it's sort of stuck to the finger. Listen to the dogs. But what we'll do with that is once it's dried, I'll just peel it off. And once you put a, a um, what do you call it? A resin in here, I think that's going to pop. It'll bring out the color of the jarrah and really show the table off. So I'm wrapped with it. It's a subject called product design, and it's not really about woodwork, it's more about the design process, sorry about the wind. And what cements the design process in the kid's mind is if they have something really worthwhile to take home. And it's not junk, it's not trash, you won't actually buy a table that looks like this, and it'd be quite expensive too, with that sort of weathered timber on top. So, I'm really happy about it, and I hope they enjoy it. This thing's an eyesore, and I don't like it out here. So, I've just found out, and fingers crossed, that there's a guy who's willing to blast it, maybe stick it in Epotech. 
um, reasonably soon. Got to take the front off, the wireframes. The other wireframes have gone in. They're being done um, by Sam at Techco. Sam's a consummate professional. He's always helping me out. Oh, I've left a shifter down there. That's not very smart. Underneath the gun. So <clears throat> I've got to cut these off because you can see they are naked. So there's a few challenges with getting them off as well. Um, then I think, ideally a rotisserie, but I don't have one, I could buy one I suppose, but I'd sooner stick it on a dolly for moving it around under a low roof. Um, so I've got to sort of get into it. I should have given him this. I might give him these things to do too. It's got a bloody hole in it. Where does this go? How does this work? So... How, oh, it goes like that. Oh, I see. Okay. Oh, I do see, and we've got welding at the front. All right. So, the next question I've got, that side all comes off. I'd be powder coating this, but I don't know. Ah, oh, to get the front end, I see. So we've got to make up a piece that goes in there. So to get to the front end bolt, you've actually got to take the tray out. Okay, I can do that. And that should just be bolted, which it is. Oh, that's easy enough. All right, so we'll get that done too. Um, right, so yeah, I've got to take it apart. got to make a dolly, if a dolly's going to suffice. I haven't talked to this guy yet, so I'm kind of keen to. Um... And then, once it's in Epotech, I can start fixing bits like that and that. And seeing which other things are going to divulge. Because I'm tipping quite a lot will. Um, I'm hoping like crazy, nothing blows through. That would kind of suck. Anyway, I got a delivery of these enormous casters. And... That's what we're going to use under the dolly. So we've got two fixed and two swiveling. And that dolly, <clears throat> I was supposed to have ordered the steel already this week and I haven't. Eight by two inch, they're quite big. Um, I'll do it next week. I'll just do it on Monday. But what I've got to think about is the width of it. I need to be able to use the dolly with the XA as well. So I'm going to make the dolly a little bit big for the EJ because I'm going to retain it for the Ford as well. They're pretty spiffy, aren't they? $115, $116 on eBay. A lot cheaper than Bunnings. And they're weighted quite well. Their weight rating's huge. EJ Y frames, and how good do these look? Got a little bit of um, rust there. It's not serious. Um, easy to fix. And the other bit is... Hang on, what's going on here? Um, no, it's not too bad. Oh, over the front. Hang on a sec. <clears throat> In there. And that doesn't look too difficult to repair. It's got a couple of skins it need looking at. I'd be inclined to cut them back out. Around there. Repair the front, then do the back. Or, actually it doesn't matter which order you do it in. Yeah, it's not a hard repair though. So this is done by Sam at Tech Code in Bayswater. He does all the powder coating stuff. But not just that, Sam bought himself a booth. And so he's done this in Epitech, which is absolutely wonderful stuff. And I'm really grateful to him. He's always done the right thing. And his works, well, the best, really. I don't know any other powder coaters that do the work he does. The quality of powder coating. And when you ask me about things like the clear on the XC's rims, they're exactly as he described. And the bike frames and everything, the colours, exactly as he describes. So, very knowledgeable bloke, but not just the powder coating. Um, he's blasted this, and he's done it in Epotech, which is wonderful. So, if you see this, Sam, thanks very much again.
It's not very nice, is it? This is a bomb. That's a bucket. I'd put hubcaps on it to make it more presentable. It's got a new hubcap, a uh, new airbag in it. The guards are pretty knackered. Um, and the engine bay doesn't look all that great. It does run quite well though. just neglected and a bit worn out. I think the first thing we'll do is take the front off. Sorry about the wind. This car's had a bit of a punch in the face. I'll have a quick look at that now. Bent up in there. This is the slow way of getting the headlights out. You can normally just pop it out from this little ball here. I'll show you what it looks like. But given that the casing is probably quite brittle, I can take them out later because I can jimmy against that instead of the case. Put a bit of CRC in there, but when you put them in, you fit that first and they just click in. But this is a good, genuine Toyota headlight, which is great. It's in great condition. Sometimes the Reflectors are inclined to um, die out. Oh, we're missing a bottom adjuster. Okay, so this is fairly stuffed. But it looks like there's no real damage on the um, radiator support. It's just this side bit. That's what I'm hoping anyway. That's a Toyota one too. That's a little bit duller. Oh, look at this. Minted. Yeah, that's folded up. Might be easier just to break a bit off the current of wreckers. Let's have a closer look. The rail's good, but see it's all creased up here. It's just that front bit. I might actually cut that off. Let's see, that's been cut there as well. Yeah, it should look like that. So it's probably going to be better. I might just cut a chunk out of a radiator support at one of the wreckers, then unzip this and weld it up, and we'll get it perfect. Because that's not acceptable. I don't like it. key <laughs> I've just seen this how's that come off oh you're kidding is that the right key for the door you're kidding it works um, what the deal is is this guy his mechanic lost the key and the panel opens and consequently took all the lock out of the other column, which is why, oh hang on, that doesn't work, which is why it wasn't working. That's got a different lock in it. 
This side, it's undamaged. Crash bar bolts on. Two bolts. Yep. Front guard bolts on here. To the radiator support. On this side, crash bar is pushed in, but not in far enough to cause concern. I think it's basically all right. Certainly doable. This is buckled, as is that lower part of the inner guard. I reckon I can hit that there. And then we've got to go back this meat up to there. If I can straighten it, I will. If I can't, I'll just cut it off and weld a new piece in. This thing a very, very rudimentary straightening job. I just want to see how it lines up when I stick this on. Oops. Oops. And it's already looking a lot better than it was. It's still right out though. There's a couple of screws and I'll stick this on. Right, the sun shines on us, but it doesn't matter. These gaps are terrible. Up there is too open. If I push that one in, which neither here nor there, these ones are closed. Okay. Now, what's happened is we've got a million humidity blisters all over the bonnet. What I think's happened is the car's been collected there, well we know it has, in this direction, bent the bonnet hinges. I've tried to muck around with them, we're not getting anywhere. Um, the other thing we've got to think about is here. We've got rust in that area there. Unusual for one of these cars because they're dipped, but it'll need a screen anyway because it's got a funky little crack going on over here, going up there like that, which means it's probably pushed it around a bit. Although, <clears throat> pardon me, that gap looks good there, nothing wrong with the shut line there, it's all good. Yeah, that's all fine. So, it hasn't really done any real damage, but. There's a few things that need to happen. That screen's gonna to have to come out. I wanna see what's behind it and if I take all around it, yeah? Particularly if there's rust over there. It's probably had a few screens and lost its coating in one application of a screen, water's got behind there or mud gathered and caused issues and we need to get rid of it. Antenna's knackered. I'm not gonna bother straighten that. I've got another one that can go in. Um. So I think the first thing we'll do is we'll whip these guards off, both front guards, we'll pull the bonnet off, change out the hinges, put it back together and see if that corrects those gaps. Oh, another one of those bloody birds. Look at that. They're just pains in the neck. So, Toyota, when you pull one of these things apart, washers aren't particularly big because everything is centred. Yeah. The holes in your bonnet hinges are also centered by a bolt that has a sort of a, a kind of any Bosch shank at the base. It centers everything down. So if it doesn't fit, there's a problem, which is what I think is going on with this. I'm just going to pop that guard off. I've got to get a stick or something to hold the bonnet up. And I'll, actually, I'll take the bonnet off and I'll show you what I mean. The hinges don't look bent, but they might be. Got a bunch of these cars, you do a mess, an inventory of crap. Bottom hinges. Um, door hinge, there's a knackered door hinge on it. There's another hinge. Headlight fitting paraphernalia, including those square clips the indicator goes into. I've got another bag of those too. And the plastic front bumper mounts. We've got a broken one on that car. We've got locks that aren't coded. I don't have a key for that, so I'll code that. Whereas there is one lock there that has a key in it, so I'll keep those two together. I don't know why I got that out. Probably just because they're there and the one in the car isn't. But I'm most interested in the hinges. They're painted silver. So that is your passenger side one, or your left hand one, because it's got your little wiper washer duver. And we've got a driver side one here with some stepped bolts, which we probably will use. So let's have a look at these and see if there's anything screamingly obvious. 
one thing that is pretty bad is all of your substructures pulled away from the skin. It's very weak. And if you push the skin onto it, you're going to end up making it look worse. But the whole, <laughs> the whole frame of it can be pushed up like that. So we've definitely got a couple of issues there, which uh, doesn't bother me. I mean, I'll just put the urethane in there. At least then it'll give you a thunk when it clothes. It won't sort of rattle around. But I think I'll just disconnect the washers and um, take them out because this is all going to need to be repainted. I don't want to replace the bottom, it's still straight. It might finesse a little bit. Something is funny about this, it just doesn't feel right. Back to bare bones, just like the other one. So I'm going to be looking for anything on here that doesn't quite look right. At the moment I can't see anything. I have a bit of a clean up. Plenum is beautiful, which is normally one of these. A lot of discoloration. Um, I don't know if that's because somebody's painted over something. I don't think so though. Those bolts have been off though. Um, it's a messy looking thing isn't it? But I might try the others anyway. Oh that's supposed to be over. Yeah there's a bit of bending there. A little bit. It's not too bad though. I'm just looking at the way that outer member there is supposed to be on that side. So that, I mean, that's probably straightened, but it feels strained. So I don't know, I don't know. I'm not going to muck around with these. I'm just going to change them over and see what happens. These um, hinges have a paper gasket either side, um, which would be to seal, because these holes, one of them is not, well, I think they're blind. And there's probably, oh, I would be inclined to fit them with a thread sealer, just in case. Oh, they haven't got it on there. I was going to say in case they went into the cabin, but there's a hole. I think they just go straight into the plenum chamber. No, they don't. Nothing untoward there. They're actually painted after they're, well, the shell's painted after the hinges are fitted. And no one's messed around there by the look of it. So that's a good thing. That's a very good thing. So, so then we'll just put them in and see if it lines up any better. I'll put the bolts. <laughs> there are the bolts. God. Now there is a bit of adjustment on the actual hinge itself. These are beautifully straight, these ones. So if there's any issue, which I don't think there will be with these, then I should be able to pick it fairly quickly. And I can just fit them where the paint line is, even though it was a different car. These are manufactured very accurately. Straight off the bat, they feel a lot better. So what we've got now, we've closed the bonnet. We've changed the bonnet hinges. We've got that shut line. Yeah, okay level here and it looks all right there it's a little bit tight over that corner but it's not enough to worry about this side though it's closed this up a bit but it's still a little bit open and this is bad right so what it means is that that rail that the guards mounted to is actually pulled in a bit so we've got these lining up fairly well on this side the bottom one's lined up, and these are out. Um, and also there as well. Which again, no deal breaker, but this has to come out, which will allow those to line up and keep the alignment there and open that gap up. What I'm going to also do, this looks terrible, I really would like to cut one out of a wrecked car, 
which is probably the best way of doing it. I'm going to see how I go with it the way it is. I'll undo the aircon, um, what do you call it, cooling fan. I'll take the radiator out, and I think that's a little bit bowed there. I'm not sure. These are very, very flimsy, so they're easy to bend. But at the moment, it's not quite there yet. Right, so here we go. I've had a go at straightening this. It looks terrible. I'm not happy with it. We've got these either they've been cut or they've cracked. The um, little plastic plug which held on the bracket for the bumper is stretched. I don't like it. I've actually gone to the wrecker and I've cut another one out of a car there. Sure that the spot is. I would be better off straightening that, disconnecting the aircon, da 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 da, -da but I'm not going to. I'm actually going to cut it above there and stitch it along there, or well, seam weld it along there. But I can't do anything with this, it just looks terrible. And so once I've done that, I can plug weld these, right, in the original locations, which are, sorry, there and there. That one stays open for the front guard mount. That one's a sort of a lining up hole, an alignment hole. I've got plastic clips, I've got this one which isn't broken, the original one's all busted up. You know, it's just a better way to go. We've got a couple of spot welds here. And where I've cut it, under there, is a brace. So I'll cut a V into it, which will wind up here, and I'll fill it with weld. I'll weld it right up, grind it off, paint it. I might paint the thing right along, actually, because the guards will be painted, so it won't look that far out of place. It'll be all sort of clean along the front. And I think that's the best way to go. You go to, I mean, Jolly's, they'll charge you for a whole radiator support panel if you do that. And think about it, didn't That's why I always go back and I recommend them to everyone, because they're wonderful. Anyway, that's what we're going to do. So I've got to cut this off in bits, straighten up this bit here. It just bends on the edge, right? They do have a downward rake on them at the front. Not as much as that. It's sort of twisted there a little bit, just on that end. But also there where the nut is for the brace. Got to straighten that. A bit of hammer and dolly will work fine. That brace is fine. It's totally undamaged, apart from that bit there. We'll put this on, and when I put this on, I'm going to measure it. It's sitting on the boss square there. So I can measure it, get it exactly where it was, so it lines up with these spot welds, and then I'll see how far the guard out, guard's out, because I reckon it's, or sorry, the inner guard, I reckon it's in a bit. So that's the direction we're taking with this. I've given the engine bay a bit of a wash. Actually, it looks bright there because the sun's on it, but it's a lot cleaner. Um, it actually looks really, really good. I had to, I took these stickers off here, a bit of prep sole for the residue, same as underneath the chassis number there. Started chopping this out. We're not held on by much now. I've got an unconventional way of uh, taking these out, which is probably the wrong way. We're damaged here in the inner skin. Whoops, down there. So have to mess around with that. I used to cut spot welds out with one of these guys. You take that off and hang on, we'll go to the other side so you can see. It's got a little sharp point there. Whoop, where are we? We'll get in the light. You can actually reverse these and they cut and they leave the metal there. I'm slack and I've gone through quite a few of them, even using a lubricant on them. Um, so my way is not the right way, so I don't do as I say. Whoops, shit, wrong way. So we've got two left. And I'm just going to start there. And I'm only just drilling first through the first skin just to give the drill somewhere to hang on to. And there's another one here. And then we take him out. Put this great big sucker in. Hang on. And just do it on slow speed. And just chip away at the top of skin. Just a little bit. I'm going to 
go too deep into it and then it'll just chip off. It's just easier to muck around with it the other way. Um, and there's nothing left to grind off. So that'll come off. You might have to give it a bit more. Oh, that's coming off now. It's not like we're keeping any of this stuff. Cool. Right, I'll show you the reason I've done this. The way I've done it, just a moment. Okay, a bit of an update. We've got all this off, the way we want it. The old one, fit it on like that. Yeah, all fits, sort of. Um, a couple of things snapped into position when I took it off. The new one, where to put it? Here. If I, if I stick this on, in roughly the right position, I've got to trim there. Well, okay, but let's line it up with those holes there and the spot welds. We're eight mil out, about there. And you can see there to there, it's got to go back this way, which means that's pushing about eight mils. That's what the problem with that gaps was. Now, the other thing is I've sort of hacked into this seam seal here because it was split and straightened that from underneath. I knew that was buckled anyway. I'll try and hammer and dolly it a bit better. Um, and that will also help bring that out to where it's meant to be. The other thing that was surprised about this car is that hinge, door hinge, was knackered. I've had six starlets, never had one with knackered door hinge, but um, that was like a Ford, you know, when they sag. So when I open this door now, there's no movement. Um, this hinge is the one that came off. And it's stuffed. I don't think they actually have a bush like the Rico kits and the Falcons do, but it's pretty well knackered and it transfers to sort of maybe 10 mil movement in the door. You can hear it stuffed, so that can go into the bin. So the bottom hinges and the top door hinges, the one on the other side is stuffed as well. Yeah, no one was bad. This one's also got a bit of movement. The back doors are fine. Oh, hang on, which is which? That's the stuffed one. That's a good one from the wreckers. Also, they have got a sleeve there. Hang on a minute. I oh, know that has too. I think. Oh, the metal's stretched around the hole. So that's going straight in the bin. It's all looking really, really good. I'm um, taking the radiator out. Just got the aircon condenser there, which I should probably unbolt that line. I've just got to make up a round. I'll get a bit of exhaust tube and cut a slot and it just sit over here while I weld there because I don't want to damage anything. Um, the easiest way to do one of these is just unbutton the, start, the spot welds along there and along the bottom, both sides, and the whole radiator support panel come off as one. I was at the wreckers and I got there at four o'clock and they said, you've got half an hour. And so I'm fighting like crazy, <laughs> bending it to try and get this off in time so I could take it home. So we're doing it a dodgy way and we're doing it a dodgy way for the worst possible reason. And that is because I don't want to decommission the air. I've already got the, to get the air conditioning done in the green one, but this one's good. Someone's going to weld around it, which is very, very bad. Oh, if you want to pick up iron filings, put a magnet through a bag. Another guy told me that trick, and that way you don't get splinters. Repaired Starley. Um, give him a quick paint in there. It's a dodgy repair. There's nothing particularly good about it because I didn't want to spend too much time. Um, we don't need this guy anymore. It looks like total ass, but I will take a photograph of that sticker because that's got the air conditioning information on it. Um, and I cannot remember uh, how much they have, how much gas. So there's black overspray and all that sort of stuff because that's what Toyota do. Well, they're not like that. <laughs> and I did sort of behind there as well. So it's a ruffy and the color looks out, but it is actually the right color. Once we've cleaned up the rest of the car, it'll be all right. I've done right across the radio to support on top of the battery tray, and she will be right. She'll be right. That's what us Aussies say when we're in doubt. <laughs> anyway, look, I hope you've enjoyed this. Take good care of yourselves, and I'll see you soon. Right.
a bit of a bleeding nose. Um, distributed le uh, seals leaking, it's come down all over the gearbox. I'm just going to mark this, just so I know exactly where it goes. There we go, splendid. Now let's get this mofo out and find out what the hell's leaking, because it's leaking. It's on a dog. Oh, there it is. Is that the thing that was leaking? I think it was. It looks like it was leaking. Anyway, let's have a look. That was the cause of my concern. This thing was dry before. But it's still, well, I don't know. It's a manual gear bag. I shouldn't be getting oil anywhere else. We'll pop one in anyway, hey? Right, we're using a dentist tool on a nosebleed. Get on good terms with your dentist. These are the little guys they use to dig around in your teeth looking for fillings. Or cavities, I should say. Now this looks like it's shrunk a little bit. It's gonna, oh, try not to impale yourself. You can get it under and derail it. That's the idea of it. And it doesn't look too bad. I mean, it's not hard as a rock. But what we can do is we can go into a selection of LD O-rings, which have every size except the ones you want. I wish I had a dollar for every time I looked in here and the one I wanted wasn't there. That does look quite spiffy, if not a little bit too big. What about that one? Sometimes with O-rings, if they're too big, you're better off getting one that's slightly too small. It is a bit stiff. Stiff. Well, let's just put it on and see what happens. A lot of activity. People have got kids next door and, or a party or something going on. Bloody hell. <laughs> Maybe we'll get the one that's too big. This is turning into a huge pain in the ass. Is that going to leak? Probably, but it is sitting a little bit proud, which is what I'm after. Oh, that. That's good. No, I reckon that's going to be good. It's kind of there. Um, right. Maybe Aldi have proved me wrong, and they have every size you need, but I keep running out of luck like that. Anyway, we'll clean it off and try it all out and see how it goes, but for now I think we'll just maybe put a little bit of grease around that and throw it back in. You've heard me say it before, how much I love Toyota cars, and that's because they do things like this. That's all chamfered around there. So, that will help it go in. So many manufacturers don't bother with that, and then you can't get the bloody thing in because it rolls the O-ring back and cuts it. Um, all right. Smear a bit of this on. Just make it a bit slippery. I'm not putting much on, just a tiny bit, just to sort of dampen it a bit. And leave that. And try and remember how this was. It was kind of up there. Okay. They're <laughs> so good, these things. They're so good. Alright, I'm just going to put this back on, stick some bolts in, and it should be good. While I'm under here, I might as well tighten up that alternator belt. I replaced them, all the belts and the cam belt and all that sort of stuff, because I actually broke an alternator belt. So. I've tightened the oil on the belt, I've fixed that only found out about that today. I did top the oil up before and you don't need to with this car because it never uses oil. That's spot on full. Runs beautifully, doesn't it? I'm looking down now on that ledge to see if it drips. Um, you know, if you want a cheap car, you can get one of these, thousand bucks or so, and you can spend another thousand bringing it up to condition. You know, most of them have done two to three hundred thousand kilometres, and you know you're going to get twenty years out of it. And they use very little petrol. I mean. Fuel now is over $2 a litre, and I don't want to play devil's advocate, but I just, I'm not concerned about it. 
because I put 60 bucks in, 50 bucks in, I'm getting two weeks. You know, they're just the most brilliant car. I can't think of a bad word to say about these things. You now, one thing I do have to do, I have to paint it, but until I've got a garage to keep it in, then I'm not. Oh, I've got a digital clock. If you put the fan on, hear that rumble? That'll be foam hitting the fan blade. I was going to pop the glove box out, have a bit of a look behind there, but what is it now, 10 to 7? I might wait for another day, but isn't it a superb little car? It was ill-fitting up there before. I've refitted that because it irked me a bit, but um, I've done nearly 7,000 Ks, and it's just perfect. Absolutely perfect for what I use it for. I'm most happy with it. What do you reckon? She haven't. Jesus. <laughs> Move. Move. Come on. 